the a in makes the sound like in. I'm pretty sure you can tell that this is a silence letter. The Peshat level of understanding for this letter is that it has a numerical value of 70 and it is the 16th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It means I and it kind of sounds like Zayin. Like, see the Ayin and Zayin, just add a Z, Zayin. The Ramez level of understanding is that this letter is composed of a Vav and a Nun. If you add their numerical values together, which is Nun, 50 plus Vav 6, you get 56. If you add 5 plus 6, you get 11. 11 is the number of good and evil. This letter is spelled with a Ayin, a Yud, and a Nun Sofit. But this is a Nun, but it would suffice. It would suffice enough. If you add the numerical values together, which is Ayin, 70, plus Yod, 10, plus Nun, so feet, 50, you get 130, which is 13 if you drop the zero. If you add one plus three, you get four. And the numerical value of the Dalit is four. If you take the numerical value of the Ayin, which is 70, and add seven plus zero, you get seven. So the essence of this letter is actually Zion because the numerical value of Zion is seven because it represents crown, splendor, royalty, royalty provision, conquering, and splendor. In Deuteronomy, it says in, hold on, let me get there. It says in Deuteronomy 11, 18 through 21, therefore you are to set these words of mine, your heart and in your soul. You are to bind them a sign on your hands and as frontless between your eyes. You are to teach them to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You are, you are to write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, so that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied on the land I deny swore to your fathers, as long as the heavens are above the earth. So, it said we have to teach them diligently to who? Your children? when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up, right? It said that we have to bind them as a sign upon our hands. We have to honor God with what we do with our hands. And it said that we need to write them on the doorposts of our house. We need to put the word between our eyes, between in our, on our house. And we need to honor God with our mouth, our tongue, with what we say. Yes, on our say. Gates, like our teeth. Our teeth hold our tongue in so we don't lash out at people. We have to honor God with what we're saying. Now for the third level of understanding, the Darash. Did you know that our brain is kind of shaped like a tree? Our brain is like the bushy leaves and our spinal cord is like the stem of the tree that roots into our nervous system. This means that whatever we let into our brain, through our eyes, that we, whatever we let there, we're going to speak and do. So what we let into our head, what our brain, what we see, we always have to make sure that it's good and not evil. That's why we need to guard our eye gates. We need to walk in humility, and then we can provide for others, be an abundance, provision. Remember, Zayi means provision and abundance. And then when we do that, we can open the door to people's hearts. We can either open a door to good or open a door to evil. Remember what happened in the Garden of Eden? Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So this is what this tree in the back here represents. We need to remember not to eat of our thoughts. We, we need to remember that we shouldn't eat of the fruit that our thoughts produce. We can, but we shouldn't. Mom. No. Mm. You're so good. Public school. Can't Whoa. eat of the fruit of our bad thoughts. Mm. Instead, we should think on these things. 
It says in Philippians, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any virtue and if there is anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. So we need to dwell on the things that it says in Philippians 4, 8, and not on the pro, uh, not on what our bad thoughts produce. Remember, Yeshua said, if your eye is good, then your whole body will be good. Now for the fourth level of understanding, the side level of understanding. It is, remember that I means eyes, okay? And it is your decision today. What are your eyes looking at? Are they looking at what is good or what is evil? Sometimes what we look at can determine what we dream when we sleep or what we say when we talk to people. We always have to look at things on the good side because if we look at what is good, then we'll produce good thoughts and we'll have a good mind. And then we can obey the Father. I lay before you life and death. Choose life. He's giving us a test and he's giving us the answer to the test. Wow, what a great teacher gives you the test and then gives you the answer key. This is like a path. See, you come to a fork in the road and then there's the good eye, what we look at that is good, or there's the evil eye, what we look at that is bad. He's choose saying, life. when you come to the fork in the path, choose life. He's giving us the answer. Remember the letter of humility? The noon. And finally we say, the, the eyes are the windows to our soul. So whatever we let into our eyes, whatever we see, will go right to our soul. Now we will teach you how to draw and paint the aim. So to draw the eye, first we're going to start with our dots. So the first dot we're going to make is going to be here, and then we're going to make another dot here and at the end. So for this dot, imagine the grid lines going through here. This dot will be close to the center. So I'll say it may be about here to make a dot. This is the center, maybe an inch above the center. Then we're just gonna go to the middle right here, maybe like an inch out, and make a dot here. The middle of this line, inch out. So we're just gonna make the top line here. We're gonna go down a little bit, curve up, then go down again. Then we can swoop a little bit. Now we're going to do the bottom. So we're going to make this line that goes all the way through here and it ends here. So we're going to make this dot that where it ends. So imagine the grid lines going through. This would be like in the middle section here, like an inch high. Like a dot right about here. So our goal is to make this entire section, it's going to be a long line. So let's just start doing that. So just make this like that. You want to make this part thick and start curving it back down. Curve inward and then curve back out. And see here how it kind of goes up a little bit, then goes like down like a dive. That's what we're going to try to do. Like that, and then down. So then we're going to do this one. We're going to make this part. It's going to like a curve in. But you want to make it level to this. Then we're just going to go parallel down. Right about here you can lay it thick out and just like kind of go straight to the back. Like that. So now we're just going to do the other half. So we're going to start maybe, this one just has one dot as you can see. So imagine your grid lines. I would say maybe like right about here, close to the center. The center will be like right about here. You can make it half an inch and an inch high. So make sure you want, you want to align with this dot here. Make it like a straight eye. So let's just go down. I'm going to do this line and I'm going to connect it to the other one. You want to connect it like right before it starts like going straight down. Almost. 
that area. So now we're going to make the other one. The other one's going to go down and I'm going to go parallel and connect it to the, bottom, the dot at the bottom. I'm going to go straight down a little bit like that. I'm going to curve out and curve in. And we're just going to go parallel, making this not too thick. And right about here, as you can see, it's going to thicken out. So let's just keep going straight and curve a little bit. You're not going to connect it, right? We're just going to go to the dot. Like that. So you can make the eyes if you like. I'm not going to make eyes for this one. But if you will, you'll just make like this part first, the eyeball, the eyebrow. So then we're going to make this, this the tree in the background. We're gonna make these little things here. It's like a hop, 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 hop. That hop got cut off. Good. Then we're gonna make, let's just make this background line first so we can pinpoint where our tree would go. So right here. Then again, the ground's not perfect. So it's okay if it's like squiggling a little bit. So, then we're going to make the tree, big tree. So I'll make, so you want the tree to maybe start where it intercedes it into the eye a little bit and then goes out. So I'm going to start right here, start going straight up almost. I'm going to stop at the grid line, then do the same for the other side. Then again, you can fix any mistakes that you do in the painting section. Stop by the grid lines. So then we're just gonna make this branch here. So from this line, we're just gonna curve and do this part. We're gonna curve out and end here. So I'm gonna curve out and curve again. Just like that. Then we're just gonna do the other half, this part. and stop like right about where you curve. We're gonna continue from this, doing it like that. Like that. We're gonna start at the top and bring it back down. Top maybe there. We're gonna go straight up almost. Start on the other one. And for this one, we're just gonna keep going and connect, or just make it disappear at the eye. So, now that we have that branch, we're gonna do this one over here. This one's gonna be easier. So, we're just gonna curve out, making that branch here. Then, pretend like it starts here, I'll keep going. I'll stop right here. that. Now, now we're going to make this one. It's going to be like close to the middle in between. So I'll start at the grid lines for me. Then again, you can add more branches if you like. You can make your branches more unique if you want. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. So now that we have all the branches, we're gonna make the bottom tree leaf. So I'm gonna start mine like right about here. Maybe like half an inch below the grid lines. And I'm gonna like hop, hop. Hop, start coming up a little bit, hop, hop. Try starting closer to the, as if we kept going, that, so I'll start right here. Hop, 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 hop. There. 
So now I'm just going to erase this line that went right through my tree. And the grid lines too. So under than that, other than that, that's how you draw the eyeing. So to paint the eyeing, these are the colors that I'll be using: Caribbean for the sky, real green, real blue. Spring green, real yellow, black, pumpkin orange, nutmeg, classic caramel, and apricot. I'm going to start off with the sky. And to do this, as you can see in this sketch drawing, there's a little bit of space in these corners. So I'm gonna uh, paint in those, and then the tree, I'm not gonna paint anything in there. Blue, and I'll paint on the sides. And then after I paint that, I'll paint the ground with green. For the sky, I'm just gonna use Caribbean, and for the grass, I'll be using first real green, and then a coat of spring green on the top. I'm also just gonna be using my number 10 flat brush to make it go a little faster. Now we are going to read to you Psalm 119 verses 121 to 128 and explain to you how it correlates with the A. Verse 121 through 122. I did what is just and right. Do not lead me to my oppressors. Guarantee your servants' well-being. Do not let arrogant ones oppress me. So this is saying in verse 121, I did what is just and right. And we always need to remember to look with our good eye at what is just and right, and not what is the opposite. The next two verses is 123 through 124. My eyes fail, longing for your salvation and for your righteous words. Work. Deal with your servant as benefits, as benefits your loving kindness and teach me your statutes. So in this verse 123, it says, my eyes fail, fail longing for your salvation. So you can see how this is the opposite of that evil eye they were, of the good eye they were talking about. Remember the good eye was just and right. In verse 123, it's talking about the evil eye and how it fails, longing for your salvation. The next two verses is 125 through 126. I am your servants, give me discernment, so I may understand your testimonies. It is time for Adonai to act. They have violated your Torah. So here in verse 125, it says discernment. And what does discernment mean? It means to see. The definition of discernment is the ability to judge well. And to be able to judge, you need to be able to see clearly, like see the evidence, see everything before you judge. The last two verses is 127 through 128. Therefore, I love your mitzvot more than gold, more than pure gold. Therefore, I esteem all your precepts as right in every way, every false way I hate. So it says pure gold. What happens when you look at pure gold? You see your reflection, right? You see with your eyes. It says in James, Chapter 1, verse 23 to 25. For, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For, any, for once he looks at himself and goes away, he immediately forgets what sort of person he was. 
but the one who looks intently into the perfect Torah, the Torah that gives freedom and continue and continues in it, not becoming a hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he shall be blessed in what he does. And again, it says this in James chapter 1, verse 23 to 25. So that pure gold is the Torah. When we read the Torah, we look into it. It's like the gold. When we look into the gold, we see our reflection. When we look into the Torah, we see who we really are. And the Torah changes us. It forms us like gold. You can form it and weld it into something. So we have just read to you Psalm, 120, Psalm 119 verses 121 to 128 and explained how it correlates with the A. So now I'm going to be working on the um, stem of the tree. And uh, to do this, I'm going to be using the first color is going to start off dark and we'll work lighter. So the first color I'll be using is nutmeg and a very light layer of nutmeg. Now I'm going to be painting in my Ain. And in this picture, it has eyes because Ain means I, remember? Um, it is up to you if you want to draw the eyes on this or paint the eyes. For We thought it was a little scary, but we're so I'm going to be painting this Ain without the eyes. So, so for the left side of the Ain, I'm going to be using apricot for the evil eye part. I'm also going to be using my number two brush. And for the right side, the good eye, I'm going to be using real blue. The next thing I'm gonna do is um, paint in the tree and the kind of leaves. And to do this, I'm gonna start off again with a darker layer of real green, and then go over it with a little bit of spring green. Now I'm going to go over the dark green with spring green. So now I'm going to go over some lighter layers of my tree, the stem part. And first, the, the first layer I'm going to use is classic caramel. Then I'm going to go into a little bit of pumpkin orange, and then the very, very last layer will be apricot. And if you want, you can put a little bit of yellow.
so the next and final thing that I'm going to do is go over a border for the A with my black paint and my number two angle brush. I hope you enjoy painting the Ayin with me. Today you learned about the Ayin and how it makes the sound like in. I'm pretty sure you can tell that this is a silent letter. You learned that our eyes are the windows to our soul and what we let into what we see will go to our soul. And when it goes to our soul, it will go to our spirit. And whatever influences our spirit will effect on what we produce, what we do, what we say, how we look, like our face, when we have like a bad attitude or something, it will affect what we produce. You learn how to spell the ayin with an ayin, a yud, and a nun suffit. So when our eye with the ayin, either the good or evil eye, submits to an authority, then we can produce either what is good or what is evil. We always want to produce what is good. Good thoughts, good things that we say, good feelings, good emotions. And finally, you learn to choose life. I put before you life and death, choose life. And then we need to also choose holiness because when you do, then the Father will use you for what he wants you to complete and what he wants you to do in your lifetime and on this earth. We, we hope, hope you enjoyed this video! Shout out!